Hey guys, what's going on? Yes, something is holding up my my uploading. I have a whole nother story to tell you about the Sumerians and it isn't going up. It's sitting still. It's been sitting still for hours. So I'm going to try to I'm going to try to to put something in here in between time. It was some good information in there too. That's how it goes. Well, there's little quirks and things happening on my end anyway, so who cares? That's how it works. So this idea of Sumerians, the Sumerian stories and stuff like that, you know, the Good Samaritans and all that, of course it has to still have something to do with our Bible. And, and this is a real religion. And this is where a lot of information comes from. It's not that, that this is going to be like for Buddha, this and that, but we all have the same elements in our stuff. It's great. And in Buddhism, it's the inside of the wheel that they like the most. That's what this is. It's what's inside of the wheel. It's what's inside of you. You know, it's the, it's the, the vessel would be the outside and the, you know, and what it would be contained would be the inside. All of these are just so wonderful stories, but it's all about meditation, every bit of it. So uh, as we would go into these stories, all right, now I didn't get to move into anything at all with the last video. It just seems like, wow, this was pretty cool. What does it mean? So we ended on, what was it? Uh, slaying the dragon. All right, that's what all of this is about. You got to remember, even in in relate in Revelations, it's about slaying the dragon. All right, it's about get, trying to get away from the dragon, and then later on, we destroy the dragon, throw him up against the mountain, he slides down to the water, and it takes care of him. But you know, that's no different than in the stories where they take and cut down a tree and throw it in the water and make sweet water out of it. You know. It's all symbolism. Everything that we're talking about is dark language, things that it's, it's hidden, and it's hidden on purpose. Just like that idea with Esther, her name itself is shown she is hidden. And we had to, she had to do this first before the good stuff could happen later on. So there was this bad queen that needed to be replaced. The old queen wasn't, you know, you're, when father calls you, when you're, when you're, when the king summons this girl, she's supposed to sit. That's the whole point of it is, is that she's going to come right there. That she's lickety split, stuff like that. So his queen wasn't coming to him. She said, fuck you. And so he said, hey, hey, you know, I got to give me a new one. And everything starts off with a virgin. Got to have that virgin. Can see which one of these is going to. So it's like everyone is testing out the water, seeing what the spirituality thinks is going to be the best. So they find this one. Well, it's no different in Samaritan stories. All right. Because here we have, we have uh, Inanna. I-N-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, Inanna, all right? She's this beautiful one. She's the god of wisdom, all right? Her boyfriend, her consort, is the bull of heaven, king of all things, all right? Talk about it, all right? You know, the bull, you and I are the bull, right? The people that are real and stuff like that. And she's a, <clears throat> she brings light into the world and life and wisdom. So you know that she is the Holy Spirit. It's what's beautiful about this, all right? And um, I mean, just like in the stories of Solomon's temple, where Solomon's uh, uh, the little the little story that he goes through with the girl, they never meet up. You know, it's oh my God! You know, they want it. They know that they're the best for me, each other. They know that they are, but he decides to go to the ladies of the lilies of the field instead, and they never hook up. But that just goes on and on and on. One day they'll hook up. One day, maybe sometime, maybe not. That's the luck of the draw. All right. So she, Ivana, or this, uh, this Inanna, Inanna, I N A N N, she has an older sister. Of course she does. These are moon gods. All right. So this is representing our emotions. All right. This, this woman, uh, her sister, her name is Arishkikal, something like that, something crazy. But it's E-R-E-S-H-K-I-G-A-L, Arishkigal, all right? 
Well, she's the goddess of the dead. All right. When you're hanging out with her, you're dead. You just, you know, it's the underworld. Believe it or not, that's what it is. And, and, and the underworld in these stories is about meditation. All of these people and things that we talk about, Jesus even, this is about the median, the median, the middle, what's inside of us, what's in the middle, this area right in here. It's the body and mind connection with the spiritual side of us. And that's what all these stories are about. Something that's happening inside of us. All right. They just relate to the outside. So when you're with her, when you're with this, this ferocious girl, you die. All right. And so in these stories, when you're slaying the dragon, what happens is see, see, they actually represent water. Okay. So uh, along with Inky, the, the, the main story guy of the whole thing. But anyway, see, these, um, when you slay the dragon, when you actually finally slay the dragon, it's when it lays down and relaxes. But it brings the water to the surface, to the mind. It water brings water. This is the, this is the flooding of the earth, all right. And that nothing can live on top of it. There's nothing, you know, when this when this happens. So it's all the earth goes quiet. So this is meditation term that you know. Hey, we just uh, we just put God got out of this by using water. All right. So um, so. In order to fix this, in order to fix this, this is this idea that uh, uh, rocks are being laid on the shoreline to divide the upper waters from the lower waters. And if you can remember this from Adam and Eve stories, or not the Adam and Eve before this, when they were creating Earth itself, okay? And uh, this idea of uh, creating the earth brought us to, uh, uh, to to dividing the upper waters from the lower waters. And the lower waters, they pulled it all together and they called that the land. And this is from the waters of the lower. All right. So what happens is, is that there's this, there's this idea that what they're trying to do is to halt the lower waters from invading and spoiling the rest of the water. So the way this works in these stories is they build this this uh, this build this um, this rock rock ledge or rock rock wall between the land and the ocean. All right, or the, this water, and at the same time, it stops the lower waters from flowing. So the, the cut, that's a cutting off. That's a circumcision from the lower. You're not going to be fed from these things. It's, it's brackish and salt and stuff like that. It's the stories of can a, can a faucet put out both fresh water and salt water at the same time? And it's no. And this goes on to the story of can you serve one master or to, can you serve two masters and says, no, you've got to take your choice. You're the choice. You're going to be on the side of land. You're going to be dry mouth and, and dry, you know, just thirsty <clears throat> and no rest. So on the other side, you drink from the inside well, from this, from the internal waters in here. Then you never go thirsty again. And this is the idea of whether or not you have connected to God or not connected to God. This is where we're supposed to get our food. So anyways, it's just very interesting that uh, this Arishikal, she is in charge of dead people. She's sin. This is a, these are all extensions of the, of the goddess moon, Ishtar, all right? And this has to do with your, the reproduction, all right? So here's your reproduction. If you're on the outside, you're not going to connect any babies. This is a male on male situation. It's when we go to seek uh, comfort to a priest. So this is a male fall lovers of men. It doesn't say who's going to be lovers of men. Men will be lovers of men. And so this is the idea that you're going to go and get your comfort from him. And so this answers the questions in Ezekiel with that gay text where it says, that if you lie with man as you would lie with womankind, you're ruining this. That's the biblical fag, you know, because that's 
a religion actually becomes an extension of the lower mind. And so here the lower mind is serving itself. And this is what it means to be a homogeneous type of situation. Remember, we're only working off father, right? We don't have mother in the situation. And then we get this whore in between. And when we drink from the whore, we die. All right. So this is the same business here. So what happens is that she thinks she's going to go down there. This is this, this, the wider, the brighter sister. She says, you know, I'm going to go down and visit the underworld. You know, all right. So think about this as we talk about it, as I talk about it. That Anana, Anana, Anana says, "I'm going to go and try to try to fix things." So uh, she gets herself all decorated up in some pretty clothes and, and jewelry and stuff like that. You know, she is this. She is the female representation of the Kundalini, and she's coming down. Now Jesus also comes down. And as he, and in the stories, he's ripped the clothes off of them after they had just put them all on, and then it's taking them all off because before you go, you got to be naked. All right. So as he's descending, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then the stomach, give us this day our daily bread, and la di da di da. The bottom of the ladder is where this devil is where this um, is where the serpent is all right the, the the dragon that's it's at the bottom of the ladder and the bottom of the ladder is a, is red this is hell this is a place where pit is that's where it is you have to go there first the, all these things have to do boom boom it's going you're drifting you're going to sleep and as you finally make it down to the bottom she is totally naked. All her clothes have been taken off of her from each gate that she went through. All right. And so now she finds herself down at the bottom and she's being confronted by the guy at the gate there. Before you can come into my into this castle, and there's always this little gate. <clears throat> Jesus finds himself on the inside of this gate, being beaten, whipped, and all that stuff. And Peter finds himself on the on this side of things, on the opposite side, until a little a woman comes and sees to him and opens the gate and lets him in, and they all sit around the fire. It's just beautiful symbolism. They all sit around the pineal gland and watch all the stuff that's going on, but it's an outside situation. You know, later on he's going to be killed and it becomes an inside situation. The guy's got to die first. So. She's finding herself down at the bottom of the ladder. This is the stories that they, that, that I've read about. And I'm surmising them, but I don't think I'm doing too bad. So as she is um, stared down by this group of people that her sister sent to, you know, to take care of her, dropping her down even further into the pit, and as these people brought her down deeper and deeper into the pit, they looked at, they put her on a pole, and then she became this corpse. So here is the same idea that, uh, and in three days and three nights, if her consort, if her friend that was she talked to, she goes, if you don't hear from me, come down and find me. And this is how you're going to do it. You know, and so in the story, he says, okay, so he has to go through these phases of, of, of uh, you know, of, of stages of consciousness. So as you would see, is he says, first you're going to have to go to NL, NL, that's N, that's E-N-L-I-L. -L. She is the God of the wind. That's the first one that she has, he has to go to, all right? And that's actually going to represent this body right here, this first one, all right? Says that one there is not going to help you. He says, then you got to go to the next one, the God of the Moon. That'd be this one here. And if that one can't help you, you're going to have to go to to the third one. The third one is Inky. So this would be our human side. This would be Inky. Inky represents you and me, the, the person. He has a way, a clever, very, very clever way of coming and getting me. All right. So anyway, so we're supposed to recognize that this, that this, uh, you know, uh, Iwana, 
is doing this as a physical situation. She's gone down to a physical place. She's gone down in hell. Right. What does Inky do? He hooks up two witnesses to come up and do all this stuff, sexless witnesses, to go in and follow these things. Now, what we've done is, is that we've gone, we're meditating. And as he is meditating, he himself is following in the same footprints. And but he went through <clears throat> the story. He had to do this, 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 and this. But Inky says, "This is what we're going to do." Remember, it's always going to be you that's going to do the saving. And like we saw in our last stories, is that uh, with e Esther, is that you got to do it. The decree of God that says, you know, he's already down. You can't change what God wrote. You can't, or the king, the king was in a decree and it says, you can't change it. You're going to have to go and you're going to have to take care of it yourself. So that's what that was supposed to have gotten through to people. If you had an ear for it or not, you know, was that, you know, this is our problem. This isn't someone else's. It's not Jesus coming to save the day here. It's you waking up and meeting him halfway, you know, and it has to do with what you've got on the inside. So anyway, so she dies and turns into a corpse down there. And then later on, the idea is, is that when you go and find her, you're going to feed her this. You're going to dash her with the food, then this, this and that, and it'll bring her back to life. And this is the same, this is the same thing that happens with Buddha when he's in looking for his enlightening. He goes underneath the tree and he starves himself to death. And he's in this place where he's all emaciated and he says bones and stuff. And a little maiden comes through. The field, you know, finds him, look at him, says, oh my God, it's probably one of these magic things of the forest. And so she feeds it. This is, uh, this is, believe it or not, this is Cinderella opening up the door to her house and finding the prince and his servant looking for something to drink. So she goes out and pours him some water. It's the same thing. It's the same story. It's raising hairs on arms. It's the cool shit, you guys. <clears throat> So when it comes down to it, she comes back alive. And when she comes back alive, you know, this is this after the three days and three nights, she goes wandering through the town. Jesus does the same thing. This is when Pentecost and all this business comes in. She, he goes and meets up with the brethren and everything. But the tablet breaks off here. Now, no one knows any more about this particular part of the story. But you and I know this is a positive situation. This is a positive situation. She's going to be restored, and they know that they're going to. She's going to get the right food and the right watering and stuff like that to come live and, and, and to be of service. It's the, it's just so sweet. It's a it's a the Sumerians will offer up a whole more a whole mess of more text towards things, but they are cheap tree chopping motherfuckers. All right, they're here to teach men how to how to find the gold and to become men and so you know we get this oh this is where we were you know be uh, some kind of hybrid with the with monsters and this and that and this is how they made us into who we are today but you know it's they're talking about you know you guys were already here but this is how you could tap your highest potential is if you could learn this you know and so, uh, evidently, you know, everybody learned how to do this, and then they did something wrong, maybe something happened, and then they said, well, you know, we may just try to hide this. Maybe we'll just see what happens, you know. And then with this hiding, then the whole world gets destroyed, but, you know, it goes on forever. And ever, and ever, and ever, and ever. I am not going to concern myself with the details that God has already put into play, all right? But I'm telling you these parts about these things that, you know, our religions are connected. Our, all the real, true religions are connected. You wouldn't find this stuff in Scientology. You certainly wouldn't see, see any of this stuff in, in any of these uh, uh, other man-made religions. If they don't have this, they have no salvation whatsoever. All right. So I hope you got something out of this. And uh, I hear someone would like to know more about these things. This is the coolest shit on earth. So when. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I th Did I already tell the whole story? I think I already did. When you kill the serpent, 
he lays down and falls asleep. When we, uh, when David goes against Goliath, this monster, when he does this, he goes to sleep. When, when Adam is put to sleep by God, does he get his female side going? So it all has to do with this being knocked out. The male man, the mind has to go to sleep before any of this stuff happens, right? And so, and here it says, and, and then playing it out in real life is our works that we have to follow the bitch, you know, we have to go to this person that kills us, you know, but dying could never have been so much fun, you know? Anyways, I love you guys. I hope you got something out of this. And uh, let's see if my other one shows up. All right, my other video. All right. I love you. Ain't this the neatest shit on earth? I'll see you later. Thanks.